Turnout in yesterday's election for city council was less than 14 percent. That's hardly surprising given the lack of a race for mayor. But the kind of turnout that usually favors incumbents this time around was good enough for two challengers. To shed some light on why it happened is our guest, a political consultant, Joyce Ferrable Bowling. First of all, just yesterday, the, the women yesterday. Oh, awesome. Just awesome. Um, I'm a board member of the Mass Women's Political Caucus, and uh, we endorsed um, all of the women who won on the Boston City Council, the new mayor of uh, Medford, who happens to be a woman, and an Asian-American city councilor, uh, Ms. Uh, Lang from uh, Quincy. So we had a cl clean sweep. That's always good to hear. Well, here in Boston, uh, not only did you have uh, one district councilor unseated by a woman, but you, you had, uh, at least in your large race, you had a new woman joining the council, and the two top vote-getters at large were women, too. Absolutely. A phenomenal uh, win across the board. I do have to say that I was a little saddened that uh, Councilor Yancey, uh, you know, was defeated um, because, but I think that he will, you know, is a servant of the community. I think that the work he's done uh, will remain. I think that his initiative to get a, a substation built in Dudley helped uh, the uh, Massachusetts miracle. The library, the state of the li art library, the two community centers. Um, he's been an institution builder, and I think that he's always been an activist. And I think that he's not going to, you know, take his little uh, bucket and, and go home. I think you'll hear more of Charles because the community is in in, in real need. And I think that uh, also Andrea. Um, who has a fabulous background, you know, much is expected of, of her. And so she's got uh, her hands full, and I think that, you know, she seems to have the requisite background to do a superb job for the community, and I congratulate her. I, I have a feeling that, that uh, aside from the, you know, the personal package of each candidate here, uh, there was something about her organization and, and what they did that made the difference. Absolutely. I mean, uh, they took nothing for granted. Um, she did exactly what she was supposed to do in fundraising, something that I always tell women uh, uh, of color who I work with, um, you've got to ask for money. And it's because she had to also uh, educate people about who she was and run against an incumbent, it was important that she raised the money to be able to do that, and that I, um, you know, really um, applaud. And I saw some political alliance uh, building here behind the scenes as well. How important is that in having an effective campaign? Well, um, I think that um, the alliances are always very, very important. I'm not sure of which alliances well, it is. Well, used. she used to work for Deval Patrick, of course, you know, and, and you know, John Wall, she was in the Patrick campaign, was at her... Uh, event last night. You know, I saw Andrea Cabral there. Oh, sure. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, many people endorsed her. They knew of her work. Um, and, um, you know, that is always very good because they bring out their constituents uh, to, to work with her. And she had a ground force, honestly. Um, and so did, did uh, Councilor Yancey. Um, the, the only issue was it, it was very hard for him to make up 900 votes that he lost in the preliminary. Um, but again, I believe that history will show him to be a legendary uh, uh, counselor and, that, and, in, and an institution builder. But, um, you know, it's a, a new day, and this is a community that needs a lot of, of, of work. I mean, you've got the poorest of the poor. You've got... Um, you know, people, you know, it's my, where I was, where I grew up, actually. Um, and I think that um, a lot, as I said before, a lot is, is, is expected of, of her. The negative things uh, that we have been just reminded of about Yancey are nothing new either. And, and, and in the past, when we heard them, he won all the time anyhow. So what's different this time around? Well, I don't know. I can't put my um, hands on it. Um, and I don't want to blame the lackluster, you know, voting uh, turnout either. Um, you know, and I think that, um, you know, I wouldn't say that folks in the community did not, felt it was a, a, a time for a change, but obviously they uh, voted uh, to, to change. 
Um, and so I think that um, having a, a very strong army as she did, uh, she did everything right. She loved door knocking. Uh, she called all the uh, leadership um, two, three different times and she asked for money. So she did all the right things to win this. Should we uh, get rid of these odd year elections maybe? Absolutely. I mean, I'm one of the key advocates for many years of having just four years. I mean, it, it's going to cost us less money. Um, I think that um, every four, you know, because when you do it two years, it's like one year, you know, st still raising money, still, you know, getting it done. It's just, it's sort of like a, a cat race that you go round and around in a, a circle chasing your tail. So I'd love it if... Uh, and I heard that Councilor Baker filed something to uh, move it to a, a, a four-year. I think that that would be a smart move. I want to ask you about the at-large uh, race, especially the new uh, councilor who's going to be taking office, Anissa Asaibi George. What, what do you think about that? Well, um, as you know, the Mass Women's Political Caucus endorsed her. I uh, personally think that she was a great candidate. You saw her everywhere. Um, as you know, she ran before. She was actually the fifth counselor, meaning if someone had left in midterm, she would take that seat. Now it's kind of switched because uh, Steve is now the fifth counselor. He came in fifth. And as you know, that happened to my husband, Bruce Bowling, where he lost the race and then Chris Ionella uh, died. Uh, and then Bruce came back on the council. So, um, you know, Steve is still, you know, in the, in the picture. I know a lot of people say that the uh, increase in the wages didn't have anything, uh, maybe not a lot to do with it, but I beg to differ in my community it had a lot to do with it. I mean, my neighbors, everybody I talked to said, geez, you know, these guys are like, well, what are they, you know, doing for this money? And there were only like one or two people uh, that folks would focus on that says, well, you know, they certainly deserve it because they're out there all the time. And they happen to be women. <laughs> right. But, but, but with, with Steve Murphy, I mean, he, he was pushing for the high figure, and, and then here he was in, in Florida for a few weeks when we were suffering up here in the winter. So, I mean, I think that must have gone Oh, over that, had, that had to have hurt. And, and also, you know, George Reagan, I have a lot of respect for. George didn't help him by saying, oh, well, he parks his car around the corner. It had nothing to do with it. It's you know, doing the job and, you know, how people are calculating when you're there and when you're actually doing the job. Um, and Steve fell short. And Anissa capitalized on that. That's all she, you know, uh, spoke about. And I know, um, I think Howie Carr helped a lot on it, too. Howie Carr did a piece saying, don't go by what the Globe says. And so you know how folks sometimes view Howie. And uh, so I'm sure that folks embrace the folks that the Globe endorsed. Yes, yes. People in Boston <laughs> did exactly what Howie Carr asked them not oh, to do. absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Joyce Farabo will have more news in just a moment.